week ago today, the track officially opened as Olympic gold medalist Carly Patterson waved the green flag. And how appropriate that Carly would wave the green over the darling of rookie orientation, Danica Patrick. And how impressive was she, 222-7, just in rookie orientation alone on Monday. Tuesday, you stir in all the veterans like points leader. Danny Walden, the climb tools machine for Andretti Green. Walden, 226.808 as the speeds are coming up on day one of open practice. On Wednesday, last year's pole sitter and race winner, well, it was a tough day. Shortly after noon, hard impact for Buddy Rice in a turn two wall. He would spend the night in the hospital. Sam Hornish would also have a little bit of a problem in the afternoon. On Wednesday, you see Buddy Rice now climbing out of his car. Hornish had a wheel nut come off as he was exiting pit road, and he ground to a halt. No damage whatsoever on the car. But late in the day, TK, Tony Kanon, quickest of the day, 227.453 miles per hour for the reigning series champion. Thursday turned out to be the coolest day of the week thus far prior to pole qualifying, 59 degrees and cold tires, ouch. Darren Manning into the turn two wall at 524. Pretty hard impact for the target Ganassi team as cars flash by and parts fly off the Manning machine. Later in the day, with just 15 minutes to go in practice, a rookie, Paul Dana, would have his troubles in the exact same spot. Coming out of two, the car spins the ethanol machine. Minimal to no contact on that car. But that would not be the end of the week for Dana. There's big things ahead for Dana on Frightening Friday. Annika Patrick, though, fastest speed of the day, 227.633 miles per hour. And she gets a nice little check from the Argent folks for being the quickest of the day. They called it Fast Friday, and indeed it was. No, Schechter wasn't golden. He was platinum, the new platinum-colored car for Panther. 227.804 miles per hour, and Chevy Power steps up. How about the guys in the Bowtie Brigade? And then trouble in turn two, the rookie Dana again, this time the hard impact. Debris everywhere. Here comes Hornets, a two-time champion. He skips over a big piece of the gearbox and goes backwards to blow over for the Marlboro Team Penske effort. He slides on his roof at 200 miles per hour. Hornish would be okay. Dana taken to the hospital with a broken back. Released earlier today. And today in qualifying here on pole day after the washout on Saturday, Danica Patrick, well, that little wiggle right there, and she gathers it back in. That wiggle in turn one cost her a good lap on lap one, 224.9. Ryan Briscoe tags the wall in turn one on lap two. It's the Briscoe bump for the target Ganassi machine. And he had been so impressive early in the week in that car getting up to speed. The guy they were all chasing, well, they chased him all of 2004. He became the series champion, Tony Kanaan in the 7-Eleven Andretti Green Machine four lap average at 227.566. On the track right now is Sam Hornish and the Marlboro Team Penske efforts, and we showed you the wild flip that Hornish had on Friday in the 6T car. That, by the way, was the quicker of the two cars that he had been in this week in practice, and uh, he is currently fifth overall uh, in uh, terms of speed for the day. Hornish uh, inside of row four in qualifying. His average 225.847 miles per hour, which puts him 10th on the grid. Now, Vince Welch, I know earlier when we were in commercial a moment ago, you had a little conversation with Roger Penske. Did he tip his hand at all? I wouldn't want to play poker with that man, that's for <laughs> sure. I asked Roger, I said, Roger, are you, you going to stick with the 10 spot with the uh, Hornish? And he kind of smiled and he says, well, we're, we're not really happy with the 10 spot, but we're going to come out and we're going to practice and see if we can find a little something extra. And, and then, you know, maybe we'll reconsider later. I don't want to tip my hand, he said to me. <laughs> Hornish during this practice session if you see some significant gains in speed then I think uh, this team Penske would would indeed pull the six machine if they believe they can make a couple of significant jumps up from the 10 spot in which they currently sit one thing to keep in mind Sam Hornish Jr. did take a wild ride as Doc documented on the, the highlight package there getting upside down and, and crashing on Friday and when Hornish crashed he bruised his knee and Sam said that the knee is really bothering me says it doesn't bother him so much when he's in the car but but when he's trying to get in and out of the car, it's quite painful. I said, did you get it x-rayed? And he said, oh, no, we didn't get it x-rayed. If it still hurts, I'll get it checked out on the 30th. That, of course, would be the day after the race. They want to take no chances. They want to make Sam Warnes Jr. wants to make sure he's in that race car uh, come race day. 
Uh, thank Vince. He's spoken like a true driver. Remember the year that Rick Mears uh, had flipped his car and had a sore foot in 1991, sat on the pole, found out later it was broken, had been broken all month long. Here are the rules, 22 spots up for grabs today. We have 19 cars that are currently in the field. After the top 22, we will begin the bumping process. Only 22 will be guaranteed today. Each car has three attempts, and that's why we will be uh, probably see some of these guys back on the racetrack uh, later today. And got to believe we may see Danica Patrick back out for a run uh, with the pole, for the pole in that final hour. What's going to happen in the Target Ganassi garage? What's going on there? We'll check in there with Jamie Little. Well, I would hope that we are going to see them back out there. Not such great luck today. Currently, you have Darren Manning qualified 16th. Ryan Briscoe had a little uh, upside down crash into the fence. And then you guys waved off Scott Dixon. What's happening right now? Dixon's out there. Are you testing for the team right now? Yes. I mean, basically, Jamie, we're just getting back to our baseline here. Uh, we, we made one last change before we sent Scott out there the last time. And uh, probably was uh, the wrong direction. So we are uh, we're just getting a baseline here. I think we're going to make one more run, probably roll it in line. What about Darren Manning? Well, you know, right now, uh, Darren's probably challenged by the fact that he's got his two teammates. We have to get settled down before we get back to work with him and maybe try to improve his time. But uh, we're going to take a look at it later this afternoon to see what it looks like where the rest of the team is right now. Right now, we have two guys out of the show. We don't want to get in the show. What about the rookie? Ryan Briscoe, is he rattled at all by no. the circumstances? No, he's not rattled. He'll be fine. He'll be out here in less than an hour. He'll be on the track. We'll see him in his T car? Yes. All right, there you have it. We will see the target Chip Ganassi drivers back out on the track. Guys, the sunshine is out. The blue sky is here. We're loving it down here on pit road. You know, Chip Ganassi, obviously, he knows a, little, a few things about this place. He's already had a pole sitter in Junquera. He won the race with Juan Pablo Montoya. And he is not going to be satisfied, as you just alluded to with the Jamie Little there, with where they are running right now. Now, we watch Sam Hornish in this car here, and uh, 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 these guys are the best. Team Penske, Greg Ray, at playing this kind of game, at uh, holding their cards until it's time to play them. Well, I think when you talk about Roger Penske and uh, Team Penske, it's not that they're good at playing this game. Roger's good at playing any game. I mean, he's always been a... Uh, uh, visionary he's always been out there pushing the edge and and, and good is never good enough and uh, you know we're talking about uh, Sam Hornish right now possibly going back out there and going faster well if cars start to bump back in and move back up the field here uh, up on the front row or the second row you'll see Castro Neves do the same thing so these guys are very very competitive again I think the uh, overall consensus you know coming into this race is that uh, the Honda Power teams might have had an advantage but the one thing you can never do, you cannot ever, no matter what, even if you had a rubber band in the back of that car, I would not bet against Roger Penske. Well, we saw it at Motegi. Roger Penske there leaning against the car, leaning against the cart there. We saw, we, no one expected Hornish to be that quick at Motegi. He comes out and puts a Toyota on the pole at Honda's home track. And listen to these numbers for Penske. There's, a, there's the number there, 12 Indy 500 pole starts as an owner, 30 front row starts uh, in the 70 times he's had cars here at Indianapolis. 13 wins. He has won three of the last four Indianapolis 500s. Uh, those wins coming among nine drivers. So uh, five of them have come from the pole. Now, we mentioned we are on the air today until 4 o'clock Eastern time here with our initial coverage. We'll be back at 6 o'clock Eastern time for the final dramatic one hour of qualifying. But we're going to remind you folks, if Danica Patrick goes back out to qualify, and she's been one of the stories we've been following all week long, a phenomenal story. If she goes back out to qualify, you will have that qualifying run live on ESPN News. That's a promise. Back with more in just a moment on Pole Day in Indianapolis. Adrian Fernandez uh, in the Monon racing machine on the track. Honda Power with the likable and very popular Mexican driver who won three of the last six events in the 2004 season. And uh, as you watch Adrian Fernandez, uh, those colors almost reminiscent of a car we saw for many, many years here with the 14 on the side of it, driven by Supertex, A.J. Floyd. And speaking of the Supertex himself, let's visit with him. Jamie? Well, they just came out here. A.J. Floyd the fourth is in the car. A.J., you guys like to wait till the latter part of the day, but it's perfect. The sun is out. What's your game plan for the day? Well, we're looking for a little bit of speed. It's a big game. Plan. You know, we're trying to get in right now, and we're struggling a little bit, but, uh, you know, we just like to get in the first day here. Going to go get some warm-up laps here and practice. What are you going to work on? 
well, we changed the motor and we met some setup chassis and gear changes, so we're going to have to see. Yesterday, you alluded to the fact that you're handicapped. What exactly are you talking about? <laughs> I mean, the car. It's just a little bit short of horsepower, but a lot of the coyotes, but we'll work it out. We'll see you in qualifying. Good luck. There's a look at A.J. Foyt, the fourth. Uh, his best finish of his career coming in the opener this year at Homestead. Had a top 10 finish in ninth. And new colors on the car. ABC Supply, the patriotic red, white, and blue of uh, Anthony Foyt as he pulls away. And you watch Adrian Fernandez now slowing down, coming down on the uh, slowdown lane back onto pit road. There's a look at the beautiful red, white, and blue colors of the American Builders and Contractors Supply Company sponsored car. These folks out of Beloit, Wisconsin. Wisconsin making an announcement earlier in the week that they're going to be full-time for a number of years uh, with A.J. Foyt. And I guess Ken Hendricks, the founder of that company, said, I was a self-made man just like that old tough Texan A.J. Foyt. So uh, I want to join up with him and go IndyCar Series racing. If I tell you, when you talk about A.J. Foyt, you can't really say this. It's more of a term of speech, but he is absolutely this case. He is a true living legend, four-time Indianapolis 500 winner. He started 34 Indianapolis 500s. It's just totally unbelievable, you know, and he knows how to get around this track. We were getting on a plane leaving uh, Japan last week, and I was sitting with A.J. while he was consuming an ice cream cone and the size of a ice cream cone at that. And I said, A.J., I said, what do you like? What do you like best about being called a living legend? He said, the living part. So I think that he, uh, <laughs> he is a lot of fun to be around. And AJ certainly 67 open wheel victories. Of course, he was the first to win Indianapolis four times here in 61, 64, 67, and 77. He won it again with Kenny Breck in 1999. And uh, the only driver to win all three crown jewels, he won the Indy 500, the Daytona 500, and the 24 hours of Le Mans. So he's done it all, and now he's hoping uh, that Anthony the fourth, AJ Ford the fourth here in this car number 14, can somehow get his first IndyCar victory, IndyCar Series victory here at Indianapolis in the Indy 500. Well, what about qualifying today? We have 19 cars in the field. Let's take a look at the uh, qualifiers thus far. Front row, Tony Kanaan, Scott Sharp, and the Toyota of Elio Castro. That was a two-time winner. Back in row two. Danica Patrick, the rookie. She may not be there all day. She may come back out. Her teammate beat Tormira beside her. And last year's rookie of the year, post game Matsura. It's an all Chevy row three. Panther teammates, Buddy Lazier, Thomas Inge, and Thomas Schechter. Row four, Penske driver, Sam Hornish Jr., Jr. the Newman Haas boys, Bruno Joncara, and Sebastian Bourdais. Row five, current points leader and three-time winner this year, Dan Weldon beside him, Roger Yasakawa, and Brian Herda. Row six, the target Ganassi car of Darren Manning, Richie Hearn, the All-American team with Chevy Power for Sam Smith and Patrick Carpentier. And his teammate, Alex Barron, the, uh, in 19th thus far in qualifying. Still three spots left to qualify here before we begin the bumping process. And, of course, later today, we'll come back at 6 Eastern time, and we will have the dramatic final one hour of pole day here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Greg Ray, uh, from what we're hearing uh, on pit road now, that uh, final hour could be uh, quite a scramble. Well, I think it is. I think it's uh, a double-edged game here. I think there's uh, a lot of drivers from... Uh, you know, uh, Patrick Carpentier and Jacques Lazier, Ed Carpenter and A.J. Foyt IV and Marty Roth and Jeff Ward, all these drivers, I think that, um, you know, they just want to be first day qualifier. If they can get in the field, I think that's going to be a great, great uh, um, thing for them. But uh, certainly when it comes to the pole, the, the Indianapolis 500, this is a this is a very, very big day. So uh, you're going to see a lot of drivers. Uh, I, I think even though they're holding the cards up saying, oh, I don't know if we can take that risk or not. I think they will. I got to put you on the spot here. Now, if you're Bobby Rahal or you're David Letterman, you're making the call now for that team uh, for Danica Patrick. You go back in the garage area and you heard Bobby Rahal tell him, tell our pit reporters a moment ago, we're going to go back out and get some practice. What do you do? Do you put her back on the racetrack and you know you've got a chance? You know she can get the pole done. Do you not give her that chance? Well, you know, I, I think they know they have the car. I think they know they have the motor. I think they know they have the people. I think they know she can get the job done on the track. She's shown that all week long. In fact, she's shown that her entire life racing. She's got more trophies than I, I've ever seen in one room. So 
there's no doubt that she can do it, but there is risk associated with it. Uh, you know, she's very high up in the order. They're in the race. They can work on race setup. If anything goes wrong, that's going to be a bad risk. Well, the, the rules say this. Now, you can take that time. She is currently inside of row two, fourth quickest. You take that time and you withdraw. You basically just tear it up and throw it away, and you get back in line to go again. Now, it is a risk because there are already 19 cars in the field. You only take 22 today, and still 10 or 11 people have not gone yet today that will potentially qualify in the final hour when we come back. And we'll remind you, though, when we go off the air here in a moment or so, if she does go back out before we're back on the air at 6 o'clock Eastern, time you will be able to see Danica Patrick's run in its entirety on ESPN News. We promise you that because that could be pretty dramatic here at Indianapolis. Tony Kanaan on the provisional poll thus far at 227.566 and of course uh, you know we're, we're talking about what could happen here in the final hour but uh, I don't know I'm looking for Sam Hornish to play a factor here. We already know Penske's got something left some cards on the table and uh, what may happen with some of the other teams. What's happening with the Ganassi target Ganassi guys. And absolutely look at Weldon. We know Weldon's fast and you could see it. Weldon always shows how fun and how uh, happy he is and you could see it in his face. You could hear it in his voice. He wants to go faster. You know they're going to work on those cars. Also uh, you listen to Bobby Rahal. Bobby Rahal gave uh, Vitor Mayer a lot of accolades. He they said he did the lion's share of the setup work last year. They know he had gives extremely good feedback, and uh, they're going to put him on the car uh, out there on the track. And if he can help uh, get the team further up on the grid with himself and also with Danica, they're going to go for it. Yeah, I personally think that Vitor Mira, although not a factor here on pole day, he may be one of the guys. If you look at, at, at the favorites among drivers who have not won the Indy 500, I've got to believe Vitor Mira has to be at or near the top of that list. Well, we have 19 cars qualified, three spots available here in qualifying thus far before we begin the bumping process. Remember, our Indy Time Trials Pole Day show resumes at 6 o'clock Eastern time here on ESPN2. Now, for Vince Welch, Jamie Little, Greg Ray, and our entire ESPN2 crew, I'm Jerry Punch. Once again, congratulating Tony Kanaan on being the fastest thus far in pole day. Coming up next, Chick-fil-A Charity Championships from Stockbridge, Georgia. Back at 6 p.m. Eastern time. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. So long, everybody. That's impressive. At 12.46 local time today, everyone wanted to see the darling of Indy, Danica Patrick, go out to qualify. Oh, Danica slips, and the car gives a wiggle in turn one. That first lap wiggle cost her three miles an hour, and probably, and quite possibly, a shot at the pole. Impressive Australian rookie Ryan Briscoe does the Briscoe bump down in turn one. Lap one of his, or lap turn one of his lap two, and the car gets up in the air, comes back down on all four. Briscoe yet to go back out. The man to watch early in qualifying, the tough Brazilian. They call him Monkey Man. He has a huge monkey tattoo. No monkey on his back when it comes to qualifying. Canon at 227.566. I'm ready if you are. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And as you watch those, those were the words of Tim Sindrick, who withdrew Sam Hornish's time and it put him in 10th spot. Hornish goes back out, picks up almost two miles an hour, and puts the, the Marlboro Team Penske machine in the middle of row one. How about the popular Mexican driver, Adrian Fernandez? Fernandez, the Monon Racing Machine. He gets back in the field for the first time this year in 2005. Annika Patrick, well, was she gonna go back out and run? She goes back on her racetrack to see, okay, do I have more speed? Can I go out and run for the pole? Well, the times were close, but not quite close enough. They called her back into the pits, and she disappointingly took the helmet off. Annika Patrick, well, it's not gonna be a pole run for the young darling of Indy. And moments later, we caught up with her. Danica, we're expecting you to go out for a second run. What was the call? Um, you know, I don't know whether it was the weather or, or just, you know, dialing ourselves out, just trying to <laughs> go faster. But I think we need to be happy with being on the second row right now. And, you know, I still did a 227.8, 227.6, you know, six, six, and, you know, it's all right. But it is is what it is. And 500 miles is a heck of a long way. And, you know, that's how far we have to go.
What was this qualifying experience like for you leading up to it? I'm sure you built it up in your mind. What was it like today? I don't know if I had, uh, you know, I don't think I had too high expectations. I, I mean, I, I hoped and expected to go out there and go for pole. And, you know, right now we'd have it if I didn't, you know, if I, if I didn't have the mistake in turn one. So, um, you know, just happy to, you know, drive for a good team that, you know, now is going to get to work on, on winning it. Hey, girl, if you sit here right now in fifth position, that's better than any woman has ever done in 89 years at Indianapolis. Yeah, just keep trucking. Well, Danica Patrick, she, you know, she says she, she didn't have high expectations, but watch her reaction here. She climbs out of the car and she is absolutely emotionally spent. What a week it has been for Danica Patrick, and what a sensational week it has been for her. And I know the disappointment, Greg Ray, you sat on the front row four times. Half the times you came here, you were on the front row. When you think you're going to be on the pole and you don't quite get it done, it's just got to be devastating. Well, you know, she talked about expectations. She didn't really have high expectations. But while that being said, she had the car to be on pole. She said she had a possibility to be on pole. And I think this morning she woke up and actually after running the practice uh, lap of 229, I think she expected to be on pole. The, yesterday got rained out and, uh, you know, emotionally she's just completely spent. Well, I mean, you, you think that she's been, it's been her all week long. She was fastest in rookie orientation, quickest lap of the month on Thursday. And then again today, almost 230 and everyone anticipated. And if she doesn't have that little wiggle in turn one, she is the pole sitter by about three hundredths of a second. But it's still, she's on the front row. And I guess the team thinking about it, do we go out and we push and push and push because she's right there at it? Or do we take our spot and get ready for race day? And I think they felt as much pressure as she's been under. And you can see how emotionally spent she was. They decided to uh, let her just take a deep breath and call it a day. Yeah, well, you could tell she was getting frustrated in the car. And, uh, you know, they, they made a, ran, a run there towards uh, when she decided to call it quits. But, uh, you know, she warmed up at 213, could only do a 223, then fell back to a 214. So the, the car wasn't there. She wasn't comfortable. And uh, I, I think she still wanted to go for it, but Bobby Ray Hall said, come on, we got a great car. You're in a good position. Let's just go work on the race setup. Okay. So Danica will not go back yet, but action now building on pit road. Uh, Vince Welch, what about Dario Franchitti? Well, Tony Kanan is sitting on the pole, but for the other three Andretti Green uh, racing drivers, it's been a little bit of a frustrating day, uh, Dario Franchitti included. Uh, you went out the first time and had a mechanical issue with your fuel cell, we understand. So how frustrating has it been waiting around? I guess the day you envisioned being a lot different than it has been. I envisioned it being a lot smoother than this, but uh, we had some issues, yeah. Uh, what that has allowed us to do is work on the car because we had a very quick car this morning and uh, on Thursday. Um, to be honest, this morning it wasn't. Uh, the, the, the qualifying run, the first lap, wasn't that quick. We've worked on it a bit. Um, I don't know how strong we are, though. Tony looks awfully strong right now. What do you expect to get out of the car when you go out? What's going to satisfy Dario Franchitti? To totally satisfied the pole, but I don't think we, I don't think we have enough for that right now. Um, I don't know why, but we'll, we'll give it our best shot. Get the RKX car in the race. Get it hopefully somewhere near the front. And um, we'll see when we come here racing in a couple of weeks. It's been interesting to hear the other drivers say that they feel as though the car has been on the edge. The foot is flat on the floor, but it just won't go any faster. Dan, your teammate Dan Weldon said the same thing. Does that change your mindset before you climb in the car? We've done a couple of quali uh, qualifying practice runs here, but we have the same problem. I think everybody does really. These cars are the, the difference between, you know, it's, it, quick and slow is so small. The adjustment required is so small to get it right. And you can be flat around here and you can be two, three, four miles an hour off the pace. Um, it, it, it is so difficult to get the car wound up and get it working right. Best of luck. Thank you. Dario Franchitti and uh, wife Ashley. Ashley Judd is down on pit lane as well, uh, wishing her husband well. Jamie Little. Well, I'm here now with Tim Sendrick, number three, Elio Castroneves, Penske Racing. We just saw Elio climb into the car for the first time this afternoon. He hasn't been out there. What is your decision at this point? Well, here you need to be prepared for pretty much anything. So right now we're just going to see what's going to happen here. It looks like they've got about three cars in line, and uh, we're going to make sure we're prepared to defend ourselves. What would make you guys go back out and defend yourselves? If we got a little practice time and it was obvious that there was a lot of potential there, then we try, see what happens. I saw Elio eyeing Dario Franchitti that last uh, few warm-up laps that he had. Do you think that'll be an indicator? Yeah, I think that uh, yeah, Dario was very close to maybe what the what's going to take to be in the front row. 
I'm not sure if he was able to go fast enough to be on the pole, but uh, I guess we're all going to see here shortly. Your other driver, Sam Hornish Jr., came out, made some adjustments to the car, jumped all the way up to second position on the front row. Did you guys make any changes? Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we, we made a few changes to the car and continued to build his confidence. And then, you know, like we've done in 2003, we just rolled it in line with him still in it and went out there and did the job. Best of luck to you guys. We're going to sit and watch this drama unfold. Dr. Punch? All right, we told you it's the final dramatic hour of pole day, and it, the drama is building. There is Jacques Lazier, 34 years of age, out of Vail, Colorado. He is the next car to go qualify. That would fill the top 22. His qualifying run when we come back. And back in Indianapolis, that is the tech rack where you put a car in for technical inspection prior to going out and qualifying. You see Dario Franchitti left side of your screen rubbing his palms together, anxiously eager to get out there and get some laps in. But he'll have to wait till this guy goes. That is Jacques Lazier, who was born in Vail, Colorado, and now lives in Alta Loma, California. Jacques, a very popular driver, among others, in the garage area. He and wife Angelique are fixtures here in the Indy Racing League and IndyCar Series competition. He ran seven times last year for Patrick Racing with a best finish of eight at Pikes Peak. Once again, it is pole day. The top 22 will take. After that, we begin the bump. We have 21 in the field. If Lazier can complete four laps, four consecutive laps, he will become the 22nd car to make it in today. And thereafter, we begin to bump from the top 22. You know, earlier I said uh, Buddy Lazier is very tenacious. Well, he must be in the water from where they grew up because uh, Jacques's from the, the same family. And uh, I tell you what, those guys are both like pit bulls. And uh, once they focus on something, they're very, very tough. Well, we told you it was a cool and overcast day. The temperature on the track is 76. The ambient air temperature, 57. And folks, early in the week, it was in the mid to upper 80s here. So this is obviously the coolest day we have had all week long. As a driver, Greg Ray, the temperatures have hovered in the mid 50s. Uh, what concerns you most? Well, you know, it's been consistent all day. It is the coolest day. The wind's been a little bit gusty, but all the way from, uh, you know, where qualifying started till now, the ambient temperature has been not too far away, only 10 degrees span, and the track temperature has been pretty close as well. So the conditions have been consistent. Uh, but they should be faster today than they have been all week long. This is Playa del Racing, a new racing team. Gary Salee and Susan Schaefer. Gary Salee, of course, who uh, uh, had race cars here in the past for Steve Knapp. Jeff Ward is a Rookie of the Year here. Steve Knapp is a Rookie of the Year as well. Uh, and back, Gary Salee helped Eddie Cheever form Cheever Racing back in 1996 when they brought Jeff Ward here, and he finished third as a Rookie of the Year back in 97. So no stranger as an owner here, getting uh, this team up to speed here. Jacques Lazier, hoping to put the car in the field for the first entry in 2005 from Playa del Racing. You know, Jacques missed the uh, first day of practice. I think they were working on uh, getting everything, everything up to speed. But, uh, you know, he hasn't had as many laps as lots of the other drivers. They got a good package. He knows this racetrack, but uh, they're a little bit behind schedule right now. Lazier here last year, he, he drove in relief of Robbie Gordon when Robbie had to leave after an hour and 47 minute rain delay. Uh, Lazier, and there is Susan Schaefer waving that green flag to get uh, to send Jacques Lazier on his way to become the 22nd car here in qualifying on pole day. We'll see what kind of speeds Lazier can give us here down below that white line in turn one. So what Jock is fighting for here is certainly to be in the field. You know, they really want to qualify today. They want to be in that top 22. If they don't qualify today, during the next week, they're going to have to focus on qualifying, getting in the show next weekend, and also on the race setup. They really want to get this behind them today. And we'll remind you, if you're just joining our coverage, poll day was scheduled yesterday. They were going to take 11 yesterday and 11 today, but Mother Nature rained out yesterday the Saturday performance. So we take 22 spots today. Next Saturday, we'll take 11. And then next Sunday, a week from today, it is bubble day or bump day. And the slowest cars in the field get bumped out by whoever goes one by one. So that's when the drama really unfolds. This time, uh, if he keeps up four more laps like that, this time we'll obviously put him in being uh, the 22nd qualifier out there. I'm not so sure if he doesn't pick it up, but that'll keep him in the show. Though. 219.984, first time by for Jacques Lazier. Now they have some uh, decisions to make. Engineer Mike Colliver 
who formerly worked for Chip Ganassi and for Team Kelly when Alonso Jr. was there. He is wrenching the car. How difficult is it, Greg, for a team to come fresh out of the box, a brand new team, and get up to speed here in a weekend ending? Well, it is tough. You know, they, they have a, a, a new package, lots of new people, and this is their, their first race together. So, um, you know, it's, it's quite a task, and uh, they got good equipment, good people, and uh, they just need more time together. Of course, when you ran your first IndyCar event in the IndyCar racing, your first race was here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, that was uh, back in 1997, and uh, I think the, uh, the equalizer was that uh, the equipment was new for everybody. Uh, the tires were new for everybody, the motors, and uh, it, it seemed like the, uh, the people had a, a lot bigger influence in it. Today, it, it really is. A, you still have to have the people. You have to have all the pieces uh, put together, but it's also about having the right piece of equipment. Jock was here quicker second time by 221.66. Back down to 219.955 on lap number three. So uh, that would put him 20th right now of the 22 cars, including himself, that have qualified. Here he comes as they watch him come sailing by out of turn four. And 34 year old Jacques Lazier, who hails from Vail, Colorado, and lives in Southern California, becomes the 22nd car to qualify on pole day with an average of 220.034 miles per hour. When we come back, the flying Scotsman, Dario Franchitti, will try to get his car up to speed. In Indianapolis, that flashing number 51, that lets Alex Barron know he is on the bubble. Yes, on the bubble on pole day, you're seeing history made. We have never had bumping on pole day. Out of the modern era here, and so Alex Barron, currently the slowest car, average four laps of 219.958. And on the track is Dario Franchitti. His second attempt to qualify, he had run two laps earlier in the afternoon and waved off on lap three when his speed came down below 222 and a half. There's no doubt that uh, Alex Barron being on the bubble right now, if you've ever heard the terminology on the hot seat, I guarantee you his driving suit's getting really hot right now. These guys want to be in, and I'm pretty sure based on the speeds that uh, Frank Keaton's going to bump Alex Barron out. And earlier in the day, Eddie Cheever was so frustrated, so proud of his guys and his team, his engineers, uh, all the guys that have worked so hard to try to get up to speed, but they are still searching for speed because both Barron and Carpentier are uh, right now in 21st and 22nd. Still lots of cars to come, so people fighting to get into the show for today. Wow, first time by for Franchitti, 227.120. That is in, that's good enough right now for fourth quickest. Inside of row two. Now, as you see, he goes around the racetrack our real time is letting you know where he would slide as he loses time or gains time. You see the sixth spot, that's plus 2.2. Did you see wife Ashley Judd, who flew in where she's been filming a movie in Arkansas, has to go back to Arkansas. She'll come back for pole day. She missed the trip to Motegi. As you see, Dario second time back, 226.657. And that was still faster than he ran any lap in this morning in the Arca X machine. This last practice session, he went out there and did uh, four 26s in a row. So, uh, you know, that 27 puts him a little faster. I know he's not going to be happy with that, but that's going to put him probably up in the first two rows. General Manager Kyle Moyer dialing the car in. Alan McDonald, the engineer. Dave Papalar is the chief mechanic. They have worked so hard. And remember, Fran Keedy has turned the fastest lap of the race in two of the last three events they have run this year. Can they get a fast lap here in the final one of qualifying? White flag in Indianapolis. Speed has dropped down now on lap three, 226, 177. Yeah, he's just trying to keep it all together now. He wants to get in before the six o'clock hour. Again, he's not going to be happy with this time, but uh, he's he's just trying to get into the show right now. If he completes this lap, it will bump Alex Barron from the top 22. And Alex will have to come back next Saturday on day three of qualifying to get it in. There is Ashley Judd sitting on the golf cart. They take the lap and the checkered ways for Dario Franchitti. A four lap average of 226.475 puts him inside row three. 
Seventh overall thus far in qualifying. So we check in down with Jamie Little. And I'm with Kim Green, one of the owners for Dario Franchitti's team. A little bit better than this morning. What was the difference? Well, you know, the cars are so sensitive. Just, you know, just keep adjusting for the conditions. And in fact, we did a four lap run a little while ago that was even better that I think had a chance at pole position. So uh, Dario will be disappointed, but we're solidly in the show. And uh, he certainly had a great race car early in the week. So I'm confident we'll be good on race day. Inside row three, you guys have one more shot. Are we going to see you back? Well, I don't know about that. Um, I guess if somebody goes out and knocks Tony off the pole, we've got the car out here. Um, I, I'd be maybe too nervous to run it, but we may, you never know, we may do that. It'll just depend what happens in the next uh, 30 or 40 minutes. Well, I have a feeling after that run, we're going to see Elio Castroneves roll out. Vince? Jacques Lazier in the Playa del Racing Machine. You've got it in the field 20th. This would be your fourth Indy 500 start, but you haven't had many laps in this machine. How comfortable is that qualifying run? No, we, we definitely haven't had that many laps into it, and each time we go out, we, uh, we seem to pick up about a, a tenth or two of a mile an hour, so... You know, I mean, it's, uh, it is what it is. We'll see what we have uh, at the end of the day. And, and if we need to, I think we can go back out and make a change and, and gain a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's, that's almost all, all we have for right now. How important is it to be in the field today and have next week to prepare to set up the race car instead of having to worry about coming back next week to qualify? I'll answer that at 6 o'clock. I, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think it'd be crucial because then we can start working on our race setup. And, uh, you know, like we were saying earlier, all we have is about 60 laps in the car right now. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of the guys. They've been working a lot of midnight hours just, to, just trying to get this car ready. And, uh, you know, three weeks ago we had a tub and a bunch of unpainted parts, and we had to put the thing together, fabricate all the, the uh, brackets and everything like that. So, you know, I'm real proud of everybody at, at Playa del Racing and uh, very thankful for TRD and all the help that they're giving us as well. One of the all-time good guys, Jacques Lazier, solid run today, still hoping to stick in the top 22. Exactly. Fourth time that uh, the brothers Lazier have started the Indianapolis 500. Buddy and Jacques both qualifying among the top 22. We'll hear from Dario Franchitti when we come back. Back with more on pole day in just a moment. Mm. A1 steak sauce. That's good. Yeah, it's that important. 